The stealth build has always been a great build to use in the Fallout games, so today I'm just going to see how far I can push it. As today we aim to find out, can you beat Fallout New Vegas without being seen? The rules for this one are a little complicated, so let me explain. I'm only allowed to attack when I'm either in the caution or hidden status. If I'm put in the danger status, I have to either maneuver my way back into hiding or reload my closest save. If I somehow kill an enemy while not hidden, I have to reload. Now before I start the run, I'm sure some of you are thinking, wait, hasn't Nurbit already done this video? Well, the answer is yes and no. Although he has done a very similar challenge, mine is just that little bit different. I still will be leaving a link to his channel, mind you, because it was the inspiration for this video, but they're not the same. With all that being said, let's start the run. For my character this time, I just made my usual with a louder mustache and hairstyle. There was no particular reasoning behind this other than when has sticking out of a crowd ever been detrimental to a stealth operation. For my specials, I focus mainly on agility for obvious reasons, as well as perception and luck for better accuracy and crit chance. The reason for the latter being that I will be dealing with enemies while in the caution phase, so getting a few lucky crits here and there would be helpful. I ended up messing up my specials seeing as I forgot to put any points into strength so I can actually use the guns. Thankfully I was able to remedy this pretty early on. Finally, for traits, I took trigger discipline because I plan on using a sniper for most of the run, and wild wasteland because why not. Like always, Chet is my first stop after the doctor's house, this time to buy a 22 pistol. Yes, I could just use my 9mm pistol for the tutorial, but I would like to kill the bottle people without the entire town hearing. Don't worry, I made sure I was hidden while I shot the bottles. I also killed Cheyenne while she was outside, as I don't feel like getting my legs ripped off when I storm the town later. If you couldn't already tell, I am planning on helping the powder gangers this time around, simply because they can send hit squads after you and I don't feel like being chased by one during the entire challenge. First of the townsfolk to go was Trudy. She doesn't wear any armor, so a single headshot was enough. Next was Sunny, who I was actually smart enough to kill in one hit. Although her leather armor allows her to survive a headshot from my pistol, I was able to use Trudy's 357 Magnum to do the job instead. I don't even remember killing Easy Pete, so next was Ringo. He could have been a problem, except the idiot completely ignored the fact I was trying to kill him and turned around when I holstered my gun. The rest of the settlers went down in a similar fashion, so before long it was time for the gunfight. Well, what should have been the gunfight at any rate. Since I already killed all the people in Good Springs, the Powder Gangers kind of just stood still for a bit before informing me I did a good thing. That was enough town stomping, at least for now, so I decided Prim would be my next stop. This is where the 2010 stealth mechanics really started to shine. You see, although my 22 pistol could take out the convicts very easily, I didn't want to use it that often since I murdered Chet, and now I'm lacking a way to get more in bulk. This made me start using the Varmint rifle, which is how I made a bit of a discovery. Even though my rifle didn't have a suppressor, I was still able to remain completely hidden after shooting it, as long as I was far away from enemies. This means that not only do I get to save ammo for my pistol, but also ladder guns like the NA Material Rifle are still viable weapons. Not that it's super helpful right now, but it definitely will be in the future. Anyways, the convicts were nothing to write home about, so I finished off their leader, freed Deputy Beagle, and then reprogrammed Prim Slim because have you seen the guy, and got myself some easy XP. Even though I didn't give them Prim, I decided I probably should do a little work for the NCR, just in case I wanted to save the president later. If you're wondering what faction I'm siding with, it'll be Mr. House this time around. Back to the NCR's current problem, I dealt with the ants for Ranger Jackson before heading to Nipton like a good little soldier. As soon as I was within shooting distance of Nipton, I used my pistol to remove Oliver Swanick's head from existence, before talking to the man with the funny hat. To be fair, I tried to kill the legionaries as they were leaving, but they walked way too fast and I was way too nervous to kill all of them. I did get one of them as well as their dogs, so that made me feel a little better. After I returned to Ranger Ghost for my XP, I started heading to the NCRF to get a few crumbs of XP from the Powder Gangers. Their jobs are as early game as you can get. Go here, kill this, repeat, and then repeat again. Spicy, I know. The only thing worth noting here was Malcolm Holmes approached me, and in true Good Samaritan fashion, I shot the demon so he can't hurt any more eardrums. Don't worry, I made sure to smash his head afterwards so he doesn't get back up as he's known to do. Also, while the NCR was attacking the Powder Gangers, I learned disguises would be invaluable this run. They basically allowed me to stay hidden indefinitely, even while shooting. After that brief distraction with the Powder Gangers, I finally started making my way to the plot. First by running to New Vegas. Like everyone else who plays this game, I have a preferred route to Vegas. Mine just has me go straight through the Death Claws. From my experience, if you follow the train tracks until you reach an old shack, you won't have to deal with any of the Death Claws. You then hug the mountainside until you can see Camp McCarran, which is your sign to jump down and start running. Although this route is Death Claw free, I ended up going a little too far and ran straight into a pack of fiends, 
who most definitely saw me. Thankfully I was right outside Camp McCarran, so I was able to get inside without taking any heavy damage. After that I trotted to the monorail and entered New Vegas. Once inside the strip I made my way to the tops to deal with Benny. I weighed my options carefully in the tops before deciding that sneaking my pistol inside and going nuts would be the answer. Yes, I know assassinating Benny would have been perfect for this run, I just couldn't resist going on a rampage in one of the casinos. Even the strongest chairman crumpled after a single shot, so you could imagine tearing through them presented no issues. Benny himself could survive a shot, but he made the common mistake of turning his back on the guy he killed that is now crouching behind him with a gun. This resulted in him suffering an accident, you know, bullet wounds just appeared in his head, happens to the best of us. I didn't do much else in the strip except give Mr. House the platinum chip and stop by any nearby vendors in Freeside. While I was shopping, I managed to grab both a silencer for my varmint rifle, as well as one for a sniper rifle. I may not have had a sniper at that moment, but I did have a plan to get one. There are a couple of people who always hold snipers, one group being the NCR at Hoover Dam. I know for a fact I can kill NCR, so I decided they would be my best targets. The road to the dam was rough, mainly due to the overaggressive crowd people that wanted nothing more than to melt my brain. Thankfully, like me, they too invested in a glass cannon build, making my newly silenced varmint rifle more than a match for them. Yes, I could run to the Brockflower Cave and pick up the Rat Slayer and give it a major upgrade, but I used that gun for most of my last video and I wanted a change of scenery. At the dam, the soldiers weren't best pleased when I killed them, but their guns were far too valuable not to pick up. It was here I got two of my best guns in the entire run. The first was a sniper that I was able to suppress immediately thanks to my shopping spree, and the next was a bit more of an odd one. This was my third run of Fallout New Vegas, yet in three playthroughs I have never touched a 12.7mm pistol, despite consistently seeing them. It proved to be one of the best finds in this run, however. On my way out of Hoover Dam, I got distracted and ended up wandering all the way to Boulder City. I thought briefly on how I'd handle things here, but in the end I decided to take the slightly edgier approach of carefully sniping all the NCR that was here. The main reasons for this was that the cons could survive hits from my lighter guns, and rather than switching my guns, I found it easier to just kill the NCR. The poor guys can't catch a break this video. Last to go was the leader outside, who just got shot in the back of the head, like so many before him. After that, I made my way back to the Gunrunners, where I waited until they had new mods for me. I didn't get anything exciting to borrow the silencer I got for my 12.7mm pistol. The reason this was so exciting was that the pistol could one-shot most enemies, if I could land the shot, mind you. If I haven't mentioned it already, even with trigger discipline, its accuracy is abysmal. If you couldn't already tell, I was having a blast with this video. Stealth sniping just happens to be my favorite way to play games, so this video was right up my alley. The first victims of my love for sniping were the fiend bosses. Driver and Ifaya was the first to go because he was the idiot who brought a golf club to a sniper duel. Next was Cook Cook, who for whatever reason could see me from a mile away. This made the whole not being seen from a mile away goal an issue, so he had to go. He ended up chasing me all the way to Violet's area before he finally gave up and turned around, letting me safely remove his head from a distance. Finally, there was Violet, who first showed up with a beard, and also showed up with a rifle of her own. It did not have a scope, so she was disqualified from the sniper contest, and then had her head lobbed off. Still riding this power high, I went for the Brotherhood next. As mentioned earlier, I'm siding with Mr. House today, which means they had to die. I didn't feel like dealing with Dobson, so instead I just used Veronica as my get out of jail free card. I knew all too well I wouldn't be able to go completely Metal Gear inside the bunker, so instead I just selectively killed the Elders before pickpocketing the Elder. The entire base is obviously put on alert when I blew it up, but I planned for that as well. I used my only stealth boy to sneak past the knights on the second floor, but I stopped on the first floor to kill the paladins. If this seemed a little backwards, you just know it's for money and the feeling of ultimate power. The paladins, although tough, don't always wear headgear, allowing me to sneak a few quick kills before I left. Not that I got out unscathed. Rather, when I was leaving, Apprentice Watkins spotted me and chased me outside. Unlucky for her, I stepped outside before she could leave and avoid getting vaporized by the explosion. I was able to grab her armor, which replaced the Chinese stealth armor I was currently wearing. If you thought I would stop the unnecessary killings after the Brotherhood of Steel, you'd be very, very wrong. As a matter of fact, I went on random killing sprees throughout the video, for no good reason. The next of these random attacks was on the mutants in Nightkin and Black Mountain. They didn't give me too much trouble except the Nightkin at the entrance of the compound that I completely forgot about. He did manage to spot me, which meant he was now going to chase me until I was dead. Unfortunately for him, dying was not on my agenda for today, so I just looped around the mountain and he never knew what hit him. I didn't try to deal with Tabitha, seeing as you have to fight her in extremely close quarters, which would leave me powerless to stop her from beating me into a pulp. 
Instead of even attempting this, I just sniped as many mutants as I could before descending down the mountain in order to find a much more achievable side quest. If you couldn't tell the reason I'm avoiding the main story up until now is because I want an anti-material rifle, which I don't have access to until I'm level 16. I figured two or three side quests would do the trick, but finding side quests I could finish was becoming a challenge. Thankfully, I had a rough idea on what I could do. I figured helping the ghouls at the rep contest site would be the ideal quest. There isn't any mandatory combat encounter, so technically I could just run through the entire site, tanking damage as I did. Not that I did that, mind you. I actually made sure to kill as many feral ghouls as I could. Despite being nothing more than walking flesh bags, the ghouls seemed to have a very high perception stat, and could see me from very, very far away. The strategy for killing them was to stay as low as possible and take pot shots whenever I could. When I finally made it inside the basement I had the nightkin to contend with, I decided to kill them because helping them would be too easy. For the most part it was fairly simple work, hide, shoot them with my pistol, and then hide again. A single headshot was enough to kill the strongest nightkin, so it was smooth sailing until I ran into him. For whatever reason, one of the random nightkin was ridiculously perceptive. He could spot me from any part of the basement which would cause him to start chasing me like a mad dog. Every time he did this, I would have to kite him around the nearby consoles for a bit, before running to the nearest door and slamming it shut. He made me do this about five times before he finally took one bullet too many. After that mess, the rest of the quest flew by, and before long I was sending ghouls to space and rockets that may or may not be modeled after toys. After I sent the zombies to space, I made a pit stop at the gunrunners to stock up on ammo. Normally I wouldn't mention this, except this time I was able to buy an anti-material rifle and a brush gun while I was there. I never got too much use out of the brush gun, but the anti-material rifle on the other hand, Yeah, after I got my new guns, I stopped by Cottonwood Cove to kill the Legion there. The nice thing about killing the Legion at the Cove was that I got to use their clothes as a disguise, letting me slip into the fort with ease. Now, if you couldn't already tell, my plan was fairly straightforward. Use my disguise to activate the Securitrons and then leave. Easy, right? Ha, no! Although I was able to get my gear by killing the guards with throwing spears I'd picked up, it wasn't much help. The only place I needed to worry about fighting was in the bunker, but there was a catch. The Praetorians that guard the place would tell me I could come in, but would attack me immediately afterwards. On top of that, they would chase me into the bunker, so sneaking past them was out of the question. In the end of the day, it boiled down to whether or not I could survive them and Mr. House's defenses while in the vault. Well, you are watching this after all, so I was definitely able to. The Praetorians did pack a punch, but they weren't nearly fast enough to do any real damage. The only problem after that was how to get out of the fort, which was simple but difficult. Run and hope the crazy skirt men don't catch me. And run I did. I ran straight out of the fort and across the map to Nellis, where I ran past the boomers' artillery. I decided to kill the boomers this time mainly because I helped them in my last run. Pearl was the easiest to kill. All I had to do was wait for her to turn around so I could shoot her with my anti-material rifle. The rest of the boomers weren't too happy that I just killed their boss and they made their opinion quite clear. Raquel and her entourage ended up being the biggest thorn in my side purely based on their placement. As soon as I exited Pearl's house, they'd see me, and like a monster in a psychological thriller, I would lose all my powers when they laid eyes on me. Not helping matters was the 2010 terrain, which would stop my bullets mid-flight. Luckily, I had the power of persistence on my side, and I was able to eventually get rid of all the explosive enthusiasts. Lastigo was loyal, who died in front of all of his peers. I don't think you have to kill Jack, but I sniped him on my way out just in case. I probably should have started making my way back to the strip after this, but instead I got distracted and wound up in Camp Golf. Counter to its name, Camp Golf isn't some sort of mini golf summer program. No, it was just the place where the NCR elite set up camp. The reason I came here was that someone in my last video reminded me that the Ranger Sequoia is indeed a gun that does exist, so I thought I'd try it in this run. The guy who had the pistol isn't even in the Ranger combat armor, so procuring the weapon wasn't exactly difficult. Not that wearing the armor would have done him any good, seeing as a 12.7mm pistol one-shots even the elite rangers. With a new armor set and pistol in my pocket, I finally made my way to wrap things up with house. Except, no, I completely forgot about the emerges. Again. I don't like them, you don't like them, the game's karma system doesn't like them. Why should I help them? My hands may be bloodier than ever, but at least I finished the last of Mr. House's work, meaning it's time for Hoover Dam. There is definitely no other quest I'm neglecting to mention. Hoover Dam was a surprisingly delicate situation. Originally, I planned to use my Legion costume to sneak past the Legionaries and straight to the Legate, which had mixed results. 
The problem with this was that the NCR would attack me instead, which would make the whole thing completely pointless. I ended up dumping the costume idea halfway through the dam and went for the more subtle approach of using my anti-material rifle with incendiary bullets to force my way through the attack. This got me spotted on multiple occasions, but my Securitron backup can handle most of the Legion themselves, so there never really was any problems. When I got to the Legate's camp, I made sure to take down his Praetorians with my sniper so I didn't alert Lanius. Now we can sit here and pretend I used a mixture of silencers and stealth to take down the Legate in a proper duel, or we could acknowledge the fact that chugging drugs from your inventory and then shooting with anti-armor rounds is enough to take down the hardest boss in the game. The Legate's the last Praetorians tried to find me after I killed him, but they never stood a chance. As for Oliver and his guards, well, I decided to end the run by shooting Oliver with my .22 pistol, even though he could see me, which did nothing. Mr. House just vaporized him like usual. Stepping over the dust pile formerly known as Oliver, I talked to Mr. House, finishing the game and proving yes, you can beat Fallout New Vegas without being seen. I usually like to end these videos with something along the lines of, well, this was a pretty tough run, but in the end of the day, I was able to beat it. I can't say this for this run because this is pretty much exactly how I play the game normally, minus a few combat encounters. Yeah, I don't really have much to say. I will address the fact that I missed last week's video, I'm sorry, I got sick, and there was no way I was recording audio. Well that's all I had for this video, so I do hope you guys enjoyed watching, if you did please consider subscribing, otherwise I will catch you in the next one.